Lauren with Lauren Leslie Studio. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to tell you all about how to develop an amazing textile design portfolio. Are you ready? Let's dive in. All right, so my first tip is going to be having a website versus a physical book. Now, in today's world, it is 2019, soon to be 2020, and in today's world, you definitely still need both. Any art director interviewing you will expect you to have a both a website and a physical book. And I think you can have both collections on there on your website. You can use a site like Squarespace or WordPress or Wix or Shopify. There's loads of different hosting sites that are really, really great and you can embed your Instagram if you use your Instagram for your artwork and your textile design, but just make sure it is um, more on the professional side if you're going to display that on your website. Um, you can also use a blog as, as a way of posting new work, so that's all really great things for art directors to see. Now you are still going to need a actual book as well. Now you can buy a portfolio kind of like this at any art supply store, really. This is called the Art Profolio, very nice. And it comes with just these little pockets. Um, you wanna make sure to include your CV, AKA resume, um, business cards if you have them, and then of course you can add your artwork in these little pages. And you want to definitely group your work into collections here, which we'll get to in just a minute. But when you're coming into your interview, your art director or interviewer will expect you to have a physical book as well. So make sure that you have both. Now my second tip is to actually research the company before you go in and adjust your portfolio according to whatever type of company it is, especially if you're not niche down already and you're not kind of staying in the same industry, but you're maybe interviewing in a few different kinds of industries that you might be interested in more than one. Because of course you're gonna research the company before you uh, interview as much as you can. That's always good practice but you should also adjust your portfolio to really fit their needs. I mean, this is your chance for the company and the art director to actually see you working there. So if they can actually see work that they would be like, oh, that would be perfect for this project or that project. I mean, the more you can just make it foolproof and really show them how your work could fit for their company, the better chances you're gonna have at getting the job. So my third tip is to create three to five different collections within your portfolio. Um, I really recommend creating collections which could be a, a group of either three to really 10 designs. It really just depends on how much work you have. Um, but you wanna create a story for each collection. So when you go in to present your portfolio, you actually have something to say. You want to practice your pitch. You want to open your portfolio with confidence and say, this is the floral collection that I did. It's based on this type of inspiration. This is the type of product I see it working on. And this is kind of my creative process. You just, you want to have something to say. You don't want to just open your portfolio and be like, uh, here, like, I don't know what to say about it. Like, no, like you need to be able to, with confidence, uh, pitch your portfolio and really show that you are the best designer for their company and for this role. So another great practice is to actually show your color palette underneath your design when you are showing your portfolio. This is a great way for um, your, the art director to really understand how you think about color and how you apply it in your designs. Color is such a huge part of design and colors are very specific and kind of niche down to different industries. And so basically if you're working in home decor, usually you're going to you know, kind of soften your color palette a bit, maybe use a little bit of duller colors, very livable colors. That would be really amazing for an art director to see. And of course, they're gonna be able to see your design and see your colorway, but if you add little color chips or little color swatches underneath your design, it really just helps spell it out for the art director how you really think about color and interpret color in your design work. So my fifth tip is to actually put your design work 
into mock-ups. Or if you have examples of like a final product, then add the professional photos into your portfolio. Again, you just want to make it as easy as possible for the art director to really understand your creative process and how you're envisioning your designs and your patterns on the end product. So seeing the final product, either a mock-up is fine if you don't have a final product, but if you do, you definitely want to show that as well. And that way the art director can just really see how you think about your designs. My sixth tip is to show your process. Art directors want to see how you actually think through your creative process. So if you have initial sketches or maybe thumbnails, again, it needs to relate to the actual collection that you're presenting. So it would be great to bring in sketches or thumbnails or even just initial designs and kind of show them how you got from the initial design to the final design and how you tweaked it, how you made revisions and how you made edits to that design to really bring it into its final beauty. So art directors just want to see how you're going to think, how you're going to go about that process so that they can really understand you as a designer and how you would fit into their team. My seventh tip is to actually present commercial work. So if, if an art director is going through your portfolio and they're like, oh, well, that's really nice, but it has more of a fine art feel, they may appreciate it as being really beautiful or really cool but they may be thinking, uh, I don't know how we would use that, or is this designer only going to be you know, doing her own style in her own little head? Is she going to be able to interpret projects in the right way for our customers? Because at the end of the day, your design work when you're in a job is not about you, it's about the customer and who's going to end up buying it. So the art director really needs to see that you can think commercially and have a commercial brain. <laughs> Um, so you want to show commercial work in your portfolio. Again, this is your opportunity and your one chance to really prove yourself um, as the right fit for this company and that you can actually do the work. So again, show commercial work, show work that can be functional and usable and actually in a retail space uh, or e-commerce site. So either one of those is a great application but you know, don't just show your fine art or you know, your self-reflection or your self-portrait type of uh, <laughs> patterns. Uh, that's cool and everything, but you know, it's, it's okay maybe to have one or two, but really the breadth of your work, you need to be able to show that you can work commercially. All right, now you may be thinking, okay, all that's great, Lauren, but I'm just starting out and I don't even have a portfolio or a body of work to show. Well, I feel your pain. And I wanna let you know that I used to be in graphic design. I did not major in textile design in college, but I decided or realized that textile design was what I actually wanted to do with my life, but I already went to college. I was already paying student loans, so then what do you do? So I decided to actually create a free training for you guys. If you look down in the description, you can watch the free training. And I'm also offering a master class called Textile Star. So if you are more interested and actually very serious about changing your career to textile design, developing a portfolio, getting an actual job in the textile design field, then I really encourage you to sign up for my course, Textile Star. You will learn more about it in the free training and on my website. As always, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. And if you like this video, also make sure to check out this video as well. I'll see you next time. Bye.